Say. Why do we live in an age that constantly encourages this illusion, you know, of static homogenous identities? Say. So the word I'm going to talk about today is a word that I deeply care about, but also one that I'm a bit troubled by, and that word is identity. It comes from French, from medieval Latin identitatem, and basically it means sameness, the state of being the same. We do know when we look at historical texts that in 16th century, for instance, the word is already out there with a slightly different spelling. But by the time you reach 17th century, it has already achieved or acquired the spelling that we know today and it is in use and from then onwards it has been used regularly. However, never as widely, as frequently as it is used today. So at the present we talk about identity all the time, don't we? We talk about identity politics, we talk about identity crisis or identity theft. In other words, it is very much present in our daily lives. And one question that I want to share is, why is it that the word identity became so dominant, so widespread at this present moment in time? This question was uh, raised, actually, by another writer, by the writer and cultural anthropologist Margaret Mead. She has this fascinating, remarkable public conversation with an author who is very, very close to my heart, James Baldwin. And in that conversation, Margaret Mead says something that I find very interesting and important. She says, the word identity became more widely used, I'm paraphrasing now, ever since we began losing it. Or you might say, ever since we began fearing losing it. In other words, in this context, um, the moment we start we start losing something very essential about ourselves, about our truth, then the word identity becomes more important for us. And I find this very, uh, you know, significant. We need, to, we need to put more thought into this. However, I am also troubled by this idea or myth, I should say, of a fixed personality, you know, of a homogeneous, static identity. Do we really have fixed identities and I want to I want to explore that question maybe part of the reason is because of my own story you know we are all shaped by our own stories and when I look back at my own life I had a much more nomadic upbringing if I may put it this way I was born in France in Strasbourg to Turkish parents and after a while, my parents got separated. My father stayed in France and my mother brought me to Turkey because for her, Turkey was the motherland. Whereas for me, it was a completely new country to discover. Over the years, I've lived in different countries. I've spent some time in Spain, in America, in different places in the States, back to Istanbul, a city that I dearly, dearly love. And today I call another country my adopted land, the UK. However, there's another place where I have spent actually most of my life, co a completely different place and elsewhere, uh, I would say, and that is Storyland. And in the kingdom of Storyland, there are no borders, there are no passport controls or police officers or wired fences, and there's no need for any of these. But the question, where are you from, is a question that has always been important to me. And actually, it's a question that I dread a lot, you know, I dread being asked because I always pause, I always hesitate. And I explore this question in this little manifesto, which is called How to Stay Sane in an Age of Division. I want to read just a little passage from there where I talk about this. Whenever I'm asked, where are you from? I want to be able to say, I am from multiple places. I come from many cities and cultures, plural and diverse. But I'm also from the ruins and remnants of these, from the memories and forgettings from the stories and silences. But even if I could offer this answer, it would probably fail to satisfy the person who had posed the question in the first place. Yes, but where are you really from? They would insist. And I knew the format. It's like a questionnaire style. You could only fit one word in that box, no more. In an age of speed, simplicity and fleeting glimpses, 
Few people had either the time or the patience for long answers. So I would simply say, Turkey. And they would nod, satisfied. Yeah, I thought I had heard it in your accent. What is it about our accents that gives us an identity? I am not denying that our accents, my accent, my mispronunciations, you know, they're an inextricable part of who I am, you know, my own story. But the question I want to ask is, as immigrants, as, you know, foreigners, as outsiders, as newcomers, as Hannah Arendt would say, can we dare to be more complex? Can we dare to be much more than our accents? But it's not only about foreigners or immigrants. I think every human being, you know, whether you've traveled your whole life or you haven't traveled much, you know, you were born and raised in the same town and you have built your own family in the same town, doesn't matter. I think as human beings, we all have multiplicity inside. As the poet Walt Whitman used to say, we all contain multitudes. The problem is, in the age we're living in, we are almost never encouraged to talk about our multitudes. We are just the opposite, actually, being pushed into boxes and tribes and expected to stay in those tribes once and for all. When I look at my own journeys, when I look at my own writing, of course, you know, you can see very clearly that I am an Istanbulite, you know. I am very emotionally attached to Istanbul, and that's not going to change whether I'm there or not. But I'm also attached to the Balkans. So put me next to a Greek author, a Bulgarian author, a Romanian author. I have so much in common with them. Equally, I have so many elements in my soul from the Middle East. Uh, again, this time put me next to a Lebanese or Syrian or Iranian or Iraqi or Jordanian or Egyptian author. I have so much in common with them too. I am European by birth, the, sh the values that I share. And over the years, I've become a Londoner. I've become a British citizen. And despite what politicians have been telling us in this country, because of this Brexit saga, I would like to call myself a citizen of the world, a citizen of humankind. And that doesn't mean that you have no care for anything. It doesn't mean that you are floating in the air aimlessly, you know, without any attachments. Just the opposite. I think having multiple belongings means that you can care about the local, regional, national, international, and the global at the same time. You can have a lot of love for the land of your ancestors, for your own culture, yet at the same time care deeply for someone else's pain, someone else's sorrow, or care deeply about the fact that our climate is you know, being ruined right now and our planet is burning. So why can't we have local and global attachments at the same time? Why do we live in an age that constantly encourages this illusion you know, of static homogenous identities. I think I feel much more comfortable and I think it's closer to our truth when I think of fluid, multiple belongings. Say, say, say.